Let's check in on what one of the leaders of the Democratic Party is up to. So Carl on Twitter says, if you needed yet another reason to drop Nancy Pelosi and support Jaffe for Congress, uh, she's supporting an anti-LGBT, anti-choice, pro-pharma corporate shill over a progressive calling for Medicare for all. What party is she in again? So, uh, he's not kidding. He's referring to a congressman named Dan Lipinski, who of course is a disgrace to all the skis out there, SKI. Um, he's from Illinois. He's a seven-term congressman from the Chicago area. And he inherited his seat from his daddy. This is already sad and gross and the problem with U.S. politics. Um, now, Marie Newman is running against him. Marie Newman is actually progressive. Bernie Sanders just today came out and endorsed uh, Marie Newman. So this guy, Lipinski, is pro-life. He's against gay rights. He even voted against Obamacare. Now, Obamacare, we all know, is a band-aid with some ointment over a gaping, gangrenous wound that is our healthcare system. But at the end of the day, when you have a choice between keeping the system as is or voting for Obamacare, um, every reasonable person was like, okay, we'll, 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 we'll take the half measure for now and get Medicare for all in the long run. Lipinski, no. And his, his no was not a no, I'm only going to vote for Medicare for all. His answer was no, I, I like things as they are. What? So, uh, this idiot, it's safe to say he's for, you know, health insurance companies rejecting people with pre-existing conditions, because he even vote for Obamacare. So how the fuck can you have a Democratic congressperson who's this out of touch, and the leader of the party endorsed him? I mean, and she goes on to say, oh, listen, but the thing about the Democrats, we're a big tent. We're a big tent, and we don't, um, we're not a rubber stamp party. So in other words, you believe whatever you want to believe, and I'll welcome you in with open arms, as long as you're a corporatist. I mean, do you not see the fundamental flaw in that reasoning? Our party is such a big tent that we allow in the ideology of the opposing party. But if you allow in the ideology of the opposing party, then you have two parties that are the same. You have the Republican Party and the Republican Light Party. And that's exactly what this is. And that's what Nancy Pelosi believes in. Nancy Pelosi is Republican Light. She is center-right. She is a corporatist. So, the choices you have in America are the far-right, represented by the Republican Party, and the center-right, represented by Nancy Pelosi and Hillary Clinton and Chuck Schumer and people like that. So, you wonder why people on the left are pissed, because nobody's representing them. You don't have a left-wing party in America. You don't have somebody fighting for workers. You don't have somebody fighting against Big Pharma and the for-profit health insurance companies and the military-industrial complex. And they rub it in your face at every turn. They think it's virtuous when they do this. They think it's virtuous to not believe in anything. That's what this is. I don't believe, I don't care. Sure, okay, well, I'm a, I like it when there are candidates who are, you know, pro-choice and are for Obamacare. Sure, that's great. But then I'm also cool if you're not in favor of those things. So then you don't believe in anything. At when did it become establishment bubble Washington wisdom 101 that it's preferable to not believe anything? Because what they do is they'll tar you with a uh, purity test. They'll say, oh, I bet purity test lefty. And that's frowned upon. It's frowned upon if you believe in something and you say, I, this is one I'm not negotiating on. They frown upon that. How the fuck can you frown upon that? The opposite... Opposite, opposite, shit, that's funny. The opposite should be frowned upon. Because then you're saying, I don't really believe in anything. Okay, then why the fuck are you involved in politics? If you don't have any beliefs, then why the fuck are you involved in this? Go do something else. Go play racquetball, dipshit. F this is politics. The whole idea of politics is supposed to be policy. But if you're saying, I don't care about the policy, or I half agree with my opponent, or I'm just vapid and empty, well then, fuck you. So when somebody like, uh, me comes along, or you, and you say, hey, listen, man, here are the non-negotiables. 
You can't take corporate PAC money. You got to be for Medicare for all and free college and a living wage and ending the wars. I mean, these are just the basics. This is what you have to, you have to believe these things. When you say that, they look down on you. And they go, ah, oh, look at this person believing in stuff and wanting to like fix the country and fix the world for the better. What a fucking naive loser you are. No, the naive loser and the careerist and the sellout is you. If you're saying, hey, I, I have no non-negotiables. Because think about it, it doesn't work in the opposite direction. It doesn't work in the opposite direction at all. The Republicans, the Republicans agree or disagree with them. Obviously, I totally disagree with them. But they have a list of shit that they believe in. They, there's no denying that. You have to believe in tax cuts for the rich. You have to believe in endless war. I mean, this is, that's what that party's built on. You have to not be a fan of immigrants. So they'll tell you what they believe in. Go ask a, an elected Democrat what they believe in. You'll get a few of them who can give you a good answer. You know, Ro Khan will give you a good answer. Tulsi Gabbard will give you a good answer. Bernie Sanders will give you a good answer. It depends what day you catch them, but occasionally Elizabeth Warren and Keith Ellison will give you a good answer. Um, but most of the Democrats, they can't tell you. They can't give you, here's the list of the things I believe in. Here's the list of things I'm going to run on. Because the whole idea is we're amorphous. We're like a blob. We're a big tent. Our tent is so big, we allow in the opposite ideology, and then they run roughshod in here. So, and think about it. For the, the Democrats, they love it. If they get a moderate Republican to agree with them, like Susan Collins or something, they're like, Oh, Susan Collins here! Let me give you a hug! Open arms! We love you so much! Meanwhile, look at the Republicans. Joe Manchin, who is the biggest of the blue dog right-wing Democrats... Even though he agrees with the Republicans over 50% of the time, at least he voted with Donald Trump over 50% of the time, they still, Mike Pence just went to West Virginia, which is my, uh, Joe Manchin's home state, and he started shitting on Joe Manchin. Uh, Joe Manchin, he didn't vote with us enough. You, you want to vote with us? You got to vote with us. You got to be for all the things that we're in favor of. So look at this skewed debate we're having in the country. The Republican team and the far right never compromise, never give credit under any circumstance. You either vote with them or you're out. The, the Democratic side half agrees with the Republicans. Say we have a big tent. We allow in people who disagree with what we're supposed to believe in. So if the right and the, the Republican Party never compromises, never gives an inch, and the whole philosophy of the Democratic Party is to be Republican light and to half agree with the Republicans and to allow in anybody because we're in a big tent, bro. Then there is no left. There is no pushback. There is nobody fighting for working people. There is nobody fighting to end the wars and fight back against big pharma and for-profit health insurance companies and Wall Street. And that's why the left is so pissed off. And they're right to be pissed off. And then the most frustrating part of all this when they lose election after election, running the neoliberals and the corporatists and the Republican light people, they lose election after election running those kinds of candidates. You know what their takeaway is? It's not, oh shit, maybe we should actually believe in something and be populist left and fight for the things that the polls show the American people want. No. Their reaction is, oh, we weren't Republican light enough. We weren't right wing enough. We weren't corporatist enough. We weren't neoliberal enough. So the takeaway is always the wrong answer. And that's why you have a situation where Nancy Pelosi is so out of touch that she brags about being the biggest fundraiser in the party. That's her main claim to fame. That's what she brags about. She's like, I'm the best. I'm literally the best fundraiser. You idiot. You're bragging about selling out more than anybody else. That's what you're bragging about. That's what that is. I raised the most money. She's not talking about I raise it, in, it, raise it in $27 increments from regular people like Jeff in accounting and, you know, Barbara down at, at the deli. No, I raise, I'm the biggest fundraiser. That's her saying, yes, for-profit health insurance companies, Big Pharma, Wall Street. I raised the most money from them. Aren't I great? No, that actually makes you fucking terrible. That makes you terrible. And that's why you believe in nothing. You believe in nothing except the shit that helps the corporations and you're not even willing to say, hey, one of the things you have to agree on to be a Democrat is health care reform. Even somebody who's against Obamacare, Obamacare was a half measure to begin with. And you're like, yeah, you don't even have to be for the half measure. 
Are you fucking kidding me? It's just a sick, sad joke. This is the state of the party, and this is why it needs to change, and this is why you need Justice Democrats elected, and this is why you need left-wingers across the board elected, because they're the only people who are going to fight for something and actually represent the American people.